Hello, I'd like to provide a brief orientation to your new Swift M10 LB microscope. It's a very fine instrument and one that I hope that you use well and learn a lot from. To make the instrument perform as it's designed, there are some adjustments that you will need to do to set it up for your eyes and the way you use the microscope. First is you will notice that the eye tubes adjust in terms of the distance. That's allowing you to put the eye tubes so that they are very comfortable for you and more importantly you get a merged image between the two eye tubes and can see most clearly. If you set it up like this that's incorrect and you won't get the best image. What you want to do is merge the images into a single common circle and that will give you your best viewing image. Once you have done that, you can make note of the scale between the two eye tubes and you can return the eye tubes to that position and it will be set up for you each and every time. Also, on the left eye tube there is a diopter adjustment. Some of you have glasses and if you are like me, I prefer to take my glasses off and just look into the eye tubes without them. And the best way to get a precise image for both eyes is to focus the right eye to the right eye tube and then use the diopter adjustment to bring the left eye tube into very crisp focus at the same time. Moving on down, you have a nose piece with four objective lenses a 4, a 10, a 50x oil, and a 100x oil. You simply rotate the nose piece and it will click into position uh, for each and every lens. There is a cautionary note here, however, and that is that with the 50x oil and the 100x oil, the working distance of those lenses is a fraction of a millimeter probably less than the thickness of your fingernail. And what is suggested with those two lenses is that before you rotate the 50 or the 100x objective into place that you lower the stage just an eighth of a turn, rotate the objective lens into position, and then return the stage to its position. This will keep you from either damaging the slide or damaging the lens, which is more important. Also, when you use the 50x and the 100x oil objectives, they are designed to be used with immersion oil. And there's an appropriate way to apply those uh, to the slide so that you get the most effective use of them. First of all, drop the stage down just a little bit. Put a drop of oil right in the middle of, of where you're going to be viewing and then raise the stage until the objective lens goes into the oil and you have a straight connection between the objective lens and the oil on the slide. After you are done using oil, or what you will want to do is again drop the stage, take a piece of lens tissue paper, and make certain that the objective lens is thoroughly cleaned. Just rub it vigorously over the bottom of the objective lens and that will remove the oil and what it will do is prevent a buildup of oil over time which will then turn into sort of a thick cloud uh, and obscure your ability to actually see clearly with that lens. Moving on down on the right hand side you have the controls for the mechanical stage. The top knob controls the x-axis or the front back movement. The bottom knob controls the, the left right or y axis and you can learn to intuitively know which knob to use as you're trying to scan a particular slide to see what's there and visible. Below the stage is the condenser. There are a couple purposes of the condenser. The first is to optimize the amount of light that is presented on the slide so that you can see clearly. Um, there are a couple of mechanisms by which that is controlled. You have a little lever on the front here, and that controls an iris diaphragm that is either uh, opened or closed as you move the lever. Obviously, 
opening the lever allows more light through. You also have a mechanism on the left side of the microscope that raises or lowers the entire condenser. The higher the condenser, the more concentrated the light, the more intense the light that is presented. And specifically as you're using the 50x and the 100x objectives, you will want the condenser in its upper position. The other function of the condenser is to help with resolution and specifically edge definition as you are using specifically the higher magnifications. You will notice on the front of the condenser that there are markings for the different objective lenses. You will want to move the lever and adjust the condenser specifically and most importantly for the 100x and the 50x objectives so that you get the appropriate amount of resolution that is capable with that particular objective. Down on the base you have an on-off switch for the light and on the right hand side you have a rheostat intensity control for the light. Again, make certain that the um, light is appropriately adjusted for the lens that you're using and the type of material that you have on your slide you will want to be careful not to have too much light because that will tend to wash out the colors and diminish some of what you are able to see. On both sides of the microscope body there is both a coarse and a fine focus mechanism. Um, get to a general position with the coarse and then fine tune your focus with the outer knob um, and bring everything into sharp resolution. Now, to come to the camera, the, cam the microscope is equipped with a 5 megapixel digital camera and you have a small LCD display screen. There's a very important cautionary note here. Please do not try and capture images unless you put an SD memory card in the slot here on the top. There is a very limited amount of memory built into the camera and when that is exceeded, the entire camera tends to lock up and it then is a pain to unlock it and proceed with operation. So make certain that there's a memory card inserted into the, the camera before you try and capture images. You have a number of controls. Starting on the left side, there is a button that says snap. Intuitively, you would think that that would control capturing images. In fact, it does. And if you want to capture an image, you simply click that button and that captures an image. The next mode button in is the mode button and that will control whether you are in still image capture, video capture, or playback mode. The next button in is a menu and it will allow you to see the different options of, of how you can control the camera, uh, things like brightness and various uh, fine-tuning capability for the camera. The next button over simply says OK. When you're on a menu item and you want to select that, you hit OK and that's where you go. The next four buttons are primarily designed to help you maneuver around on the menu and to get to the appropriate selections. And that's the primary mode for the camera. The camera also has two other modes. Uh, the first is that it it can be connected directly to a USB port on a computer and you can see a live image on your computer monitor and you can save images on a computer. However, that's probably not going to be the primary mode because the image that you display there and the image that you capture is a very low resolution image. It's 0.3 megapixels. Um, it's not primarily designed for live computer use. There's also another cable which allows you to connect directly to a TV. This will give you a full resolution TV live image and allow you to display whatever it is that you have either in the eyepieces or the small screen on a large screen for presentation to larger groups. That's a very quick overview of your instrument. If you will take care of it, keep it clean, adjust it for your particular eyes and your particular use, it will give you very excellent clear images of your subject matter. I hope that you enjoy it 
and take good care of it. Thank you.